Well, yes, a massive herd at one of the crossings indeed, but that is not it. That is an expired member of what was a massive herd. A massive herd is of a zebra massing at Main North Crossing. And, I mean, look, we could get these views, of course, from the river cams, but there are very few people here, which is unusual for a potential crossing. So I just thought we'd pop along here and get you some professionally got uh, camera shots uh, courtesy of Manu. Now I've noticed at this crossing, and uh, many might disagree with me and they are welcome to do so, that this particular position where they are now doesn't seem to be very, I've never, uh, this year I've not seen an animal cross there. They go down, they have a drink, and then Manu, if you just pan across to the right exactly like that, just keep going, keep going, keep going, there, that dusty bit there, you can see. That is, tends to be, and that's right opposite our camera, that tends to be where they come down and then go across the river. You can see also there the hapless carcass of yet another wildebeest who will not be making the trip back to Tanzania. Now that was probably killed by the Paradise Pride. They tend to like only fresh meat and they tend to kill often and then just leave the carcasses. And I believe you did see a lioness on camera earlier. Oh, look at that. Well done, Manu. That's brilliant. Awesome. What a great shot of a crocodile having his lunch. Or tea. Don't know whether crocodiles have tea. And that's not a very big one. That's really quite nice. He's trying... The one that you've just seen is coming down towards the one you're now looking at. Just trying to see if it can't get hold of some of that carcass, that's really good. Wow. Fantastic stuff. Now, the zebra are now moving off, as is their won't. I think they've come down to drink. Like I say, I don't think they were there to have any sort of crossing. They might come back, but I'm going to say I don't think they will. The light is just very beautiful. Now, I find very unusually that, you know, in South Africa, between the hours of sort of, especially in summertime, between the hours of sort of nine o'clock and ooh, even five o'clock in the evening, the light is so harsh that it's very difficult to suck any color out of it with a camera. But I find here that that tends to be much less the case. And I don't know why that is. I can only think that there's some some reason the light is... It gets very harsh here, but the colour still comes out. Maybe it's because we're that much closer to the equator. I don't know. I mean, the colours essentially are the same. Isn't that beautiful? And except, of course, that uh, wildebeest, which is not very beautiful anymore. It is now a carcass. Yes. And I think, as you will all agree, carcasses are not the most beautiful things in the world. Law or gore of fire? I think, girl of fire, I think that you are correct. You say the Paradise Pride is spoiled for choice. I think all of the lions and all of the predators at the moment are spoiled for choice. And we've waffled on and on about how difficult the Paradise Pride, not the Paradise Pride, all of the prides, and the Angama Pride especially has during the off-season when there are no migration herds here, and how do they survive, and they've got these 13 cubs to feed, and things, my times must be so tough. I think it's rubbish. I actually think that it's just easier now. I think this is a real bonus time of the year. I think it's so short that it makes, well, I mean, we'll just say two or three months. It's short, it gives them a real bonus, but there's so much left here by the time that the herds leave that even though, yes, the Paradise Pride and the Angama Pride and the Magoro Pride and all the prides around these migration herds have an absolute boon time at this time of the year, I think you'll find that when the herds are not here, I don't think they do too badly. Lots of hippos sitting in amongst the water there. Then, Manu, you see that carcass there? It seems to be moving up and down. See where I'm pointing? That's the one. I thought maybe there was a crocodile there, or perhaps a couple of catfish trying to eat it. Ali, I'm afraid I missed your question. I'm going to ask for it again. Oh, 
Oh, well, you want to know if they're cross at night, Ali? Oh, we don't think so, and I was hoping our cameras would be able to tell us that story, but, uh, well, of course, the cameras see about as well as we do at night, and so we don't know. <laughs> But I tell you why I don't think they do. Uh, not because I think they get nervous at night. All animals get nervous at night because they can't see properly. It's the same reason that you get nervous at night. But I also think that when I've seen them massing at this time of the day, yes, they do cross. But beyond a certain time, say, I don't know, I'm going to say about 6, 6.30, somewhere around there, there seems to be a much greater reticence to go down towards the water and I think that that's probably got to do with an instinctual uh, sort of look at, that's a wonderful shot there, of a vulture taking off. Beautiful white back vulture, lovely money, well done. I think the instinctual thing is that at dark, in darkness, of course, the predators come out and so they huddle together and they don't want to be in the water and at dusk, of course, that's the time that they start to get up and hunt. So no, I'm going to say no, I don't think they do cross at night. Has a crossing ever happened at night? I'm almost certain of it. Is it common? No, it is not. Well, does it ever look like they might think about crossing the river? I don't know where that particular piece of the river would actually come out. Well, I don't think they're going to cross, but I might be wrong. We will, of course, train the main north camera on this lot and then we can see later on if they actually bother to go in and across. I'm just going to show you one more thing here and that is an enormous crocodile manu way the other side there. You see down there, that's one of those really big chaps. To the left, that's it, well done. To the left, to that, there we are. Isn't that amazing? That animal is probably about 800 kilograms or so, which is about 1,800 pounds, and I would say about four and a half meters in length. Whew. All righty, now next to the crocodile, we have something called a spur-winged lapwing. You can just see it there, up a bit, Manu. That's him there. And I believe that Taylor has got her own version of a lapwing that she would like to show you. Well, this one has changed into a yellow thread.